Hello everybody and welcome back to the Fusion 360 for FTC series. This is the 14th video in the series and if you haven't watched the first 13 videos, I recommend you do so by clicking on the card in the corner. Um, in all the previous videos that we've been doing recently, we have only looked at how to create geometry from sketches using the create tool. So with whether that be extrude, revolve, sweep, or loft, um, we've really only looked at how to create um, geometry from those. We've looked a little bit at how to modify existing geometry with the rib, web, hole, and thread tool. But um, in this video, we're going to look at where some of the other tools are that are used to modify existing geometry. And that's intuitively under the modify tab right here. Um, so I'm not in the sketch workspace. I have these three bodies created and they're going to be our examples for today's videos. Um, so we're going to be looking at six tools today. Um, in the next video, we'll be finishing up the modify tools, but let's jump right in. So the first tool we're going to be looking at is fillet. And um, it is one of two here uh, that we're going to be looking at today with a shortcut. Um, the shortcut is F for fillet. Um, so if I, it's also found up here and under the drop down right here. So if I press F for fillet, um, what you need to select here is it either takes lines, edges, or it takes faces. So um, if I selected this face, um, it would fill it all the edges automatically. Um, if I went back and I selected the edge instead, it would just select the edge I selected. Um, so I'm going to select these three edges as the example. Um, and let's take a look at some of the options. So there's really only one thing that you put in, and that's the radius of the fillet. We use the fillet in the sketch. It's pretty similar. It's just in 3D. So if I did a two millimeter fillet, um, we would get a two millimeter radius um, arc here that is cutting away the material. Um, and then let's look at this corner. That's one of the more interesting things in the 3D fillet is how it handles the corner. And you have um, some options here. So right now it's on the rolling ball. Um, it's just, this is going to extend all the way it's going to extend all the way until this like two, milli two uh, millimeter radius sort of partial sphere is formed. Um, if you did a setback, it would actually set it back further. Um, and you would notice that the corner now, which is uh, indicated by these, these lines here, is not in fact a part of a two millimeter um, sphere anymore. Um, it's it has more um, so that's how you do the corner it's really up to you which one you want um, most of the time the fillet is just for looks or for removing a sharp edge on metal or plastic um, yeah that, it, that's its main use really um, there's some other features here that you can use there's the um, the radius type so if you change this to cord length um, it's just going to, instead of choosing the radius, you're just going to choose the length of the cord uh, on the on the fillet. Um, so you just choose the one that uh, works for you. And you can just drag this slider and figure out what's good. Um, so I'm gonna change this back to uh, constant radius. It's what I normally use. And I think setback looks pretty nice. So I'm just gonna put that in two. And we can click okay, and now it's actually modified our cube so we have the geometry it's all constructed here um, it has not changed our original sketch here or anything you can see it's still just a square um, but it's in fact modified the geometry um, next let's take a look at chamfer um, it's under the modified drop down here and it's right underneath fillet um, and chamfer is similar to um, fill it it's obviously it's um, used a lot just to give something a nicer look um, a nicer appearance but sometimes it's used for um, for practical purposes so if I t go ahead and turn around to the back here um, we can select some edges to chamfer so I'm going to select these three here um, and for this one you may have noticed 
I cannot select faces, it has to be edges. Um, unlike the fillet where you can select the face and it automatically selects the four, um, the four edges that define that on this cube. Um, and then, so we have some types here that we can use. Um, again, the only thing you're specifying is just the distance. Um, so if we go ahead and look at what that looks like, we can, uh, this right now is just on equal distance. So um, if you look from the side and you think about um, making a triangle like this, and this is where I started from this corner, um, I'm going two millimeters in this direction, I'm going two millimeters in this direction, I'm cutting away that triangle with the material. Um, if I change this to two distances, I can specify um, the distances individually for that triangle. So if I wanted to increase it this way, I could increase it like that, um, and then this is independent, and now I have this type of chamfer. Um, and then the other option you have here is distance and angle. And this one uses one distance, um, and you just simply specify the angle that the chamfer will be at, uh, like this. So if we had a, if if we wanted to recreate the equal distances, uh, we would set this to 45 degrees, because um, as we know, on a triangle with a 90, a right triangle with a 45 degree um, angle, it's the the shorter legs of the triangle are the same. Um, and then you can increase this and change the angle. It's just different um, methods to input the different legs of the triangle. Um, so I'm just gonna leave this at 45 or we could set it back to equal, just like that. And there we go, that looks pretty good. Uh, it gives it a nice look. I think it's nicer than the normal cube look. Um, it's just sometimes you, you like the, the chamfer over the fillet. Um, Next, let's take a look at shell, um, and I'm going to go ahead and use the cylinder for this one. So the shell tool, it's it's up here, it's also down here. Uh, it doesn't have a shortcut by default. Um, and what you have to select here is you can either select a face or a body, and we'll take a look at what what that means if you select a face or if you select a body. So just to start with a face. Um, if I select this top face on the cylinder and I start moving it in, uh, what you'll notice is that it's kind of creating like a cup shape. The bottom is intact and everything else is gotten like a sort of hollow um, hollowness added to it. Um, so uh, let's take a look at some of the options we got. The distance, um, this is obviously just for the inside direction. This is how much material you're leaving. So um, if I clicked OK and I use the measure tool by pressing I or up here um, and I measured the distance between these two uh, circles, it would be five millimeters. Um, so let me go back into the shell tool. Um, let's take a look at what happens if you change this to uh, outside. And I go out five millimeters, just like that. And what you'll notice is that this inner ring is actually where the the outside ring of the cylinder was before, and this outer ring is five millimeters um, larger than the outside ring of the cylinder before, and it's hollowed out everything. It's hollowed out basically the original body. Uh, notice it's still leaving the the bottom here intact, and that's because we've selected a face. We'll see what happens when we select a body in a bit. Um, if I change this to both, it's just going to do both. So we're going to get five millimeters from the uh, uh, five millimeters in and five millimeters out, just like that. And you can change these independently. So if I wanted more on the outside, I could go like that. Um, so let's take a look at what, what happens when you select body. So I'm going to go back in the shell tool. Um, and there's some ways I can select this body. Um, if I just selected it like, like this, um, you would notice I'm still sort of selecting this, the, the, um, the face there. Um, I'm not selecting the body. Uh, the way that you should do this is to select the body is you should just go in the drop down menu here and uh, this is my body three. So I'm just gonna click here um, and now we've selected body three. Um, now, 
the whole thing is turned blue so we're selecting all of it and let's take a look at what happens if I go five millimeters in um, just like this and it's it's very faint but you can sort of see the outline of something in there so to take a better look we're going to use the um, one of the inspect tools we've used it before um, and that's the section and analysis I'm going to select this as my face we're just going to slice it like this and now we can see what's happened what it's actually done is it's hollowed out the whole body and it's just um, added a five millimeter wall from the inside so this outside is still the outside as before just as a five millimeter wall added and everything else has been hollowed out um, so if I went back here into the shell tool just right click here and I went edit feature uh, we can change the options that we did and now we can take a look at what would happen if we uh, did some of the other options with the body selected so instead of doing uh, inside this time I'm going to do outside and I'm, if I have it on zero, it's completely solid. Everything is pink and has these diagonal lines. We know it's completely solid. If I did five millimeters outside, this inside would then have been the previous outside. And we now have another outside that's five millimeters outside that. Um, and what you may notice is that the inside geometry here that's hollowed out, even though we just have this sort of frame square profile it's actually kept the profile from the outside again we can do the both um, and then we can just choose how much in each direction um, so just like that that's how you use the shell tool uh, next let's take a look at the scale tool it's a very easy um, I honestly don't use this one that much I I prefer just changing my sketch but uh, I'm sure it has a use. Um, so this one, it, it only takes bodies. So um, uh, we can just, it, if we just hover over anything on a on a body, it'll know. So if I select this body, um, I next have to select a point uh, for it to be scaled around. Um, we using the axes tools and the point tools. Last time we could have constructed a point so in the middle of the shape so then we can scale it without changing the center of its position but for this I'm just going to choose one of these vertices at random um, and we have some options here I'm pretty sure you might be familiar with the uniform non-uniform scaling it's a pretty common thing uh, if you keep it on uniform all the dimensions all three dimensions are going to scale together um, so if I have it on 1.5, then all the dimensions are going to be 1.5 longer. If I change this to non-uniform, I can scale each axis individually. So if I want it to be 50% uh, taller, I could do um, 1.5 in the Y, excuse me, uh, just like that. And we'd keep it at 1 in the X. And now we would have it 50% uh, taller. It's pretty easy to use. Um, just like that. Next, let's take a look at the offset face tool. Um, and this one, you may think it's pretty similar to um, to to um, to extrude, but I'll show you why it's not in a little bit. Um, so if we just chose this top face here, just like this, you'd think, oh, it's just like extrude with the default settings, with no uh, taper angle or anything like that. Um, and it sort of is except that it can be used with more sort of faces. This is a flat face, it's just a very basic face. If I went here into my shell tool and I brought this in a little bit, I hollowed it out, um, just like, um, oh, it's already been shelled, oh, of course. So if we can just delete this and we can shell it again, um, just like that, and now it's working properly. Um, if I was to use extrude by pressing E or clicking up here on this face, um, you'd notice that it, it wouldn't let me select this. Um, so let's say I wanted to move this face in and um, I couldn't edit this feature for some reason, or um, I had a more complex sort of thing, then I could use the offset face command. Um, and that can take these curved faces and it will actually keep the geometry if I just move it in like that you'll notice it's actually keeping the uh, the circle just as before 
um, and it's figuring out how to scale this and move it down. So if I went like this and clicked OK, we would now have it like that, and it's worked properly. Um, so that's it for the offset face. There's not really any settings for it. It's just you specify the distance in the face. Um, it can be used on basically, I think, any face it can be used on. Um, it's a pretty useful tool. Next, let's take a look at the press pull tool, and that's the last tool for today. The press tool is one of my personal favorite tools. It's really cool because it's kind of a, a mashup of all the other tools, and it makes your your life a little bit easier when you're catting. So uh, it's up here at the top, it's down here, and the, the shortcut is Q. Um, and what press pull does is it chooses between um, fillet, extrude, and uh, offset face. Um, and it knows which one it needs to pick based on what you've selected. Um, so it just says selection, but really what you can choose is you can choose faces that are compatible with extrude, um, faces that are compatible with offset, and um, lines that are compatible with, um, with, with um, a fillet. So if I was to select this face here, which was our offset, offset um, face example before, you'll notice it's already gone to offset face. It's already jumped to off offset face. We have all the offset options here. Um, and we can go ahead and move it just like that. Um, and we didn't discuss this option here, so I'm going to go ahead and show that uh, quickly. We can just do press pull again, just like this, and it's selecting offset face. Um, if we were to move it up like this, you notice all the faces are moving together. And the way that we can stop that is just by going to new offset, and then it just moves this one. Just something uh, to know. Um, now, if I was to use press pull and I was to select and these edges like this, like we did on this cube, it would automatically jump to fill it. And now we would have it like that. Um, so it's kind of nice. Um, basically, the Q shortcut for press pull is basically a shortcut for offset face and fill it combined. Um, just makes things a little easier. Now, it hasn't actually chosen extrude at all. So let's take a look at an example where it would. If I turn on this sketch here, it's just a rectangle, and if I press Q for the the, um, the press pull command, just like this, it's under here, um, and I selected this, it would actually choose extrude, and now we have all the options that we're used to for extrude, um, just like this. So pretty pretty nifty tool. It's just a bunch of three tools, three m tools that are used a lot, uh, just combined into one. Um, so that's going to do it for today's video. In the next video, we'll be looking at um, the rest of the modified tools. We'll be looking at uh, draft, split face, split body, etc. Um, and then after that, we'll be getting into joints. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you in the next video.